All the while that they had been staying in Buckingham, there had been various charges brought against Elspeth and Hugh to try and force them to leave the parish of Closeburn. To begin with, this was wholly unsuccessful, but at last, not long after the failure of the attempt to fly from the top of Templand Hill, they were ousted from the parish. They were called yet again in front of the presbytery and they were expelled. They had quite a stroke of luck in quickly securing the tenancy of Lower Ochen Gibbert in the Galloway parish of Ar. The move also saw changes to how the Buchanites lived. The ban on taking wages was lifted and with the large collection of differing skills the Buchanites possessed between them, they quickly became prosperous as demand for their work grew. A decision was also made to wear a uniform of sorts, with all their clothes dyed grassy green. They kept to their own clique while working the local fields, though, and didn't mingle with the locals. They settled down again to await the apocalypse on their new land, but all was not well. Elspeth's relationship with Hugh had been disintegrating since their failure at Templand Hill. Andrew later said that Hugh tyrannised Elspeth, forbidding her from leaving the farm, speaking to strangers and actually beating her. Whenever she tried to exert control, Andrew said, Hugh would threaten to leave and break up the Buchanites altogether. And then, at some point, Elspeth discovered that she was ill, although she kept that from the others for as long as she could. It was inconceivable that the woman clothed in sun would sicken or worse still, die. So perhaps there was also a willfulness among her followers to ignore her outward symptoms. It certainly wasn't until she was gravely ill that anyone began to realise what was happening. On the morning of March the 29th, 1791, her health finally gave out. Her followers gathered round, many not believing that she could really die. Andrew described her as calm and composed, and she urged them to use this composure as proof that she was not really dying. She then gave a final prophecy to them. She told them that she was going on ahead to prepare paradise for them. So long as they kept their faith, her spirit would return again to her body and bring it back to life after six days. If, though, during this time they proved faithless, something no doubt used as a barb with which to needle Hugh, it would be ten years before her spirit returned to her flesh. If they were still unprepared then, she would return after 50 years, bringing the end times with her. Then Elspeth died, leaving the Buchanites in utter disarray. A decision was made immediately to hide her body and try to maintain the pretense to outsiders that she was still alive. A coffin was hastily put together and her body was placed in it. The coffin was put in the barn at Ochengerbert. Hugh tried to tell them all that she should be buried, as she had proved herself to be a mere mortal, but most of her followers refused to entertain that. This led to something of a schism in the cult, and Andrew was one of those who opposed burying Elspeth. The morning after her death, he was working in the barn, at the opposite end from the coffin, threshing sheaves of corn, and a notion occurred to him that would frighten Hugh and his faction into giving up their idea. He made a hiding place in the pile of unthreshed corn he was working from. He took Elspeth's body out of the coffin and hid it there, covering it over with corn. Then he went back to work as if nothing had happened at all. That night, he found that he couldn't sleep for fears of rats nibbling at his friend mother's body in the barn. And at dawn, he got up to put her body back in the coffin. But before he got a chance to do it, some of the women entered the barn by a different door and went straight over to the coffin. They were shocked to find it empty and jumped straight to the conclusion that Elspeth had risen by herself. They ran out again, spreading their shocking news to the rest of the cultists. Andrew kept pretending to work while he thought desperately of what to do. Everyone descended on the barn, with Hugh White standing wringing his hands at the door while the others gathered around her coffin. In a panic, they came to the conclusion that Elspeth had left them because some of them wanted to bury her. There was, supposedly, a great deal of lamentation. A visitor at Auchengibbert on business, and accompanied by a cult member, walked in on the middle of this extraordinary scene, making it impossible for them to continue to pretend that Elspeth was still alive. During all of this, 
Andrew, terrified and unable to decide what to do, kept working quietly away at his threshing. Someone at some point noticed this, and the others were immediately suspicious of his behaviour. He blurted out the truth to them, and they rushed to retrieve her body from the pile of corn. A vigil was kept around her coffin, preventing further tampering. At least Hugh could no longer dare to suggest that she should be buried. Six days passed without any more events, but after that, Hugh White and some of the other men secretly buried her body, leaving her clothes behind and telling the others an angel had come and carried her away. Andrew did not believe this and found out the truth. After that, it was decided that she should be buried inside the house at Ochenjibbert. To preserve it so that Elspeth's spirit could return to it, they packed it in feathers and buried it underneath the hearth. Now, as I've mentioned before, Elspeth's grown-up children had joined her in the Buchanites, but first of all, her son left to join the Navy, where he eventually died at the Battle of Trafalgar. Then her daughters left to open their own dame school together. Once the daughters had learned about her mother, their mother's death, they campaigned to make sure she had a decent burial. Hugh White turned them away, so they went to Sir Alexander Gordon of Greenlaw. He served a warrant on Hugh to turn the body over to the daughters. Hugh wrote a damning letter back, claiming her daughters had wished her dead in order to discredit them. He also claimed a public interment would raise a mob. Sir Alexander conceded this point, but he insisted that her burial should be verified. Elspeth had now been dead for three weeks, and there was no way that her current burial place would satisfy Sir Alexander. So, a survey of local graveyards was undertaken to try and find a suitable, recent grave to put Elspeth's body in. One was found at Cargunion Cutyard, and the poor, recently deceased occupant was lifted out so that Elspeth could be put in. The original occupant was then placed back on top of her. Sir Alexander met Hugh White at midnight at Kirkunion Kirk, where this burial arrangement was shown to him so that he could tell Elspeth's daughters that she had been properly buried. But as soon as Sir Alexander was gone, they disinterred Elspeth again and brought her back to her secret grave under the hearth at Lower Ochenjibbert. And this is where she stayed until after Hugh White had left with his faction for America. When Andrew led the remaining Buchanites to Larg Hill, the new house at Crockett Ford, they brought her with him. But this is not quite the end of the story of the Buchanites and their charismatic leader, Elspeth Buchan.